Stitches TV. And you are not going to believe what we're making today. Look at this amazing bag. When I was looking at the Bao Bao bags, I've noticed that it's very, very important that the fabric in the background is very floppy and they seem to use some sort of power mesh. So I'm using this black perforated fabric that's got a good drape on it. Now, they also use these perfectly cut little triangles of kind of shiny iridescent plastic. I don't have that. So today, I'm going to use this leather. For my handles, I'm going to use this webbing that I usually use on my bum bags. The other things that you're going to need are some bias binding to finish off the bag inside, some cling film to cover the surface for when you're gluing because you don't want to mess up your surface, some sort of straight edge with a kind of corner set square for doing your triangles and your grid, something to cut on and something to cut with. Now, I think that if you use a scalpel, it does give it a really clean edge. And finally, something to glue the leather onto the bag. And finally, to strengthen the top of the bag, I'm using anything as facing. So for me, I'm just using a bit of this black velvet, which is about two inches wide. Now, when I was experimenting with making this Bao Bao bag, I found that it's much, much easier if I start making the bag first and I do the handles and then I do the facing before I think about sticking my triangles of leather on. Today we're making our bag from scratch. Now the first thing we need to do is to find out where the centre is. So we're going to fold over our material, right sides together, and then I'm just going to put a little mark with some chalk in there so I know where the middle is. So now I'm going to work out roughly where I'm going to have my straps. So I think I'm going to have them about there and about here. So that's where I'm going to be attaching my straps. So I'm going to open it out, get my webbing, attach them onto the bag. So we've stitched on our handles, so now we're going to apply the facing and it has this finished off edge, so we're going to do it like this. So we're going to lay the facing ribbon that I'm using on top of the fabric like this, going all the way along, keeping note of how far I am, what sort of seam allowance from the edge. And we're just going to stitch just like two mil away from the edge. So I'm going to use a straight stitch on the sewing machine to stitch it on. So once you've stitched your facing on in the way that I've shown you, stitching just along there, what I want you to do is to fold it back and to press it so that you can't see the ribbon facing from this side. So the way in which to do that is when you press it, just make sure you can see just a little bit of fabric there. Then I want you to get some bonder web and I want you to cut it to about two or three mil wide and as long as you need to fit the width of your bag. And we're gonna slip that underneath our hem, making sure it doesn't poke out, otherwise it will go onto my iron and then that is such a pain. And then you're gonna apply pressure and heat with the iron to make it stick. So I'm going to go all the way along on this side and then I'm going to do the other side. Now the great thing about bonding it is that it's completely ready for us to come along on the right side because we can see through. We're going to stitch down here and nothing is going to move. So it's just a straight stitch. I've got the edge of my foot on the edge of my facing because I can kind of see through the fabric. And I'm just gonna go straight all the way along. See, look, it's starting to look like a bag now. I give that one more press. 
And now it's time to cut out our triangles. I think they're us isosceles triangles. And here is the science bit. In order to work out the size of your triangles and the order in which they're going to go, I experimented by folding pieces of paper. So I folded it over and then I folded it over again and then I folded it over again so I could have a look and see what that sort of shape of triangle would be like. So keep doing that until you've decided upon the sort of shape and size that you want. And then once you've decided that, then you need to draw out a grid work on the back of some leather. To make my life easy, I'm just gonna work in each square being 10 centimeters square. So I'm gonna draw a square that is 30 centimeters square, and then I'm gonna divide it up into 10 centimeters square. So I've got nine 10 centimeters square, so it's like a grid, divide it up into tens. Then what you need to do is so that you can get your triangles, you've got to go, across each of them like this. I mean, you'll find your own, own way to do it, but I found that this was sort of quite an easy way because we just basically want loads of equal size triangles and they have to be equal size triangles. So then I'm gonna go this way now. So then you just end up with loads of triangles. You just need to cut it out with a scalpel. I'm cutting it on a special cutting board, but you can cut it on glass or a wooden breadboard or something, so then you get nice clean lines. Before you actually start gluing your triangles onto your bag, I really recommend getting some cling film and covering whatever surface you plan upon laying it on top of. When I glue them, I'm gonna glue them on top of this board, this cutting board. So I'm gonna cover that in cling film first so that the glue doesn't make them stick onto the board. Now I experimented with quite a lot of different glues and I wanted it to be just a regular glue that you would find in most homes. And I found that the most effective one, and it's really effective, look, you can hardly tear it off. And when you do, it's the actual leather that tears rather than the leather coming away from the fabric. And I found that just regular PVA wood glue works perfectly. It takes a little bit of a while to go off, but that's fine because then you get lots of time for manipulating it. So when you put the glue on, you kind of put more than you need and you need to pay particular attention to the corners, but you can always go in afterwards and add a little bit more glue. Now, the, the really good thing about PVA glue, I know everybody knows about PVA glue, but it's fantastic because it dries clear. Decide where you're going to begin before you actually stick it down. And the way that you work is you work in squares of four triangles and you must leave about three quarter of a centimetre gap between each square. So do it something like this. So I'm gonna start there. So it's a couple of centimetres away from the top. I'm applying a little bit of pressure. Don't worry about the white stuff coming out. I'm just sliding it, putting it onto the back of my hand. When I first started doing it, I thought, oh no, this is a disaster. But it comes out unbelievably well. So I'm going to start the next one now. I'm making sure it's going all the way to the edge, all the glue's going to the edge. So I'm thinking of it as a square of four triangles. Now, take away some of the excess, but again, don't worry, it will go clear. I would do a row at a time, and then I put like a heavy weight on top and leave it there for probably about 15 minutes. So when I've done my first row of squares, so I've got four triangles in each square and I'm gonna have, for me, four, uh, three squares like that. Then I'm gonna get heavy weight, I'm gonna put it on top, leave it for about 15, 20 minutes, then I take that weight off and I turn it over and take the cling film away to let the back get dry. And then it looks like this. So look at that. Can you believe how sculptural and amazing it looks? 
and how they've sort of completely stuck. Look at the back. They completely stick and become part of the fabric. It's fantastic. What's left to be done now is simply to fold it right sides together, line it all up, line up all your edges and you're going to stitch about a centimetre away from the edge going down the sides and down the bottom and then we're going to finish it off with some bias binding. But to make my life a little bit easier I'm just going to trim away some of the excess fabric first. So just using a straight stitch go backwards and forwards at the beginning and just go straight down sewing up the side seam and sewing up the bottom. Uh, when I've got to the corner, I'm not actually doing a corner, I'm just sort of curving around the corner because then it's easier to put the bias binding on. So now I'm trimming it back to about half a centimetre, ready for me to apply the bias binding. The last bit is to put the bias binding on and I'm just using whatever I had in my cupboard, which is this cotton bias binding. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press a little bit of a lip down there and then I'm going to press loads of it enough to go all the way around my bag in half like that because then it makes it easier for me to use. For those of you that don't know what bias binding is, bias binding is fabric that is cut on the cross so there's a little bit of stretch and it normally comes prepared with pressed edges and what we generally do is we fold it in half and we stitch it on to the raw edge of fabric so that it finishes it off nicely but because it's on the cross it will nicely go around curves. There are many ways to apply bias binding but in this situation I'm just going to put my folded edge in line with the top, I'm going to let it grab the fabric and I'm going to stitch in a position which is probably about there so I know that I'm catching the one underneath as well using a straight stitch. Okay so I'm just shoving it in there and then just sewing enough from the edge so as to make sure I catch it underneath as well. And it will just reinforce the seams because you know you're going to carry heavy shopping in your bag and give it a nice finish inside because I say that the inside is just as important as the outside. Now going around the bends <laughs> going around the bend is a bit tricky but you know just to sort of do the best that you can but usually what you do is it's a little bit more stretch to take you around the bend and you'll see some of it sort of pleats in so it's a fairly good finish around there and you can always practice on a scrap of material first and that's the inside. Do you want to see the outside? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Do you know, it's, not, it's not easy to turn around. I can't get it out. Who do, I never thought it would be so difficult. I can't get it out. Right. Oh, look how amazing. Is it amazing or is it just me? Oh, I really love it. Thank you so much for watching Stitchless TV. If you make your bag inspired by Bao Bao bags, I want to see them. So send me your pictures to tree at stitchless.co.uk or share them on my Facebook page, Stitchless Tree. Thank you. Bye.